I've already made one video about what the relation of 1 degree per 60 nautical miles implies for the shape of the Earth. In this one I'm going to approach the problem from a slightly different angle. We'll start with two assumptions. One, every star has a unique corresponding geographical position, or GP, on Earth. The GP is the point where the star is in the zenith, that is, directly overhead. Or, in other words, its elevation angle is 90 degrees. Second, for every 60 nautical miles of distance from the star's GP, or 69.1 statute miles, or 111 kilometers, the elevation angle of the star decreases by 1 degree. So if we move by 60 nautical miles from the GP, the elevation of the star will drop to 80, 89 degrees. At 120 nautical miles it will be 88 degrees, and so on. Fair enough? As far as I know, even some flat earthers don't dispute these two facts. They seem to accept that stars have unique GPs at any given moment, and at least some of them accept the 1 degree per 60 nautical miles relation, even though they seem to think this somehow works on a flat earth. Many people, me included, have been pointing out that the relation would be different on a flat plane. But let's not get hung up on that. The argument I'm going to present will work a bit differently. Now, a small disclaimer. I don't recall seeing this put this way before, but it's quite possible someone already did it, as this doesn't exactly require a stroke of genius to notice. I just thought of it recently though, and I thought I'd share it. Even if this isn't new, it certainly won't hurt to show it once more. So let's think what's going to happen if we stand at the GP of some star, and we start to move away from it along a straight line. As I've already said, the elevation angle of the star starts at 90 degrees. Once we move to 60 nautical miles away, it will drop to 89 degrees. Another 60 nautical miles, another degree. And so on. 600 nautical miles away, 80 degrees. 1200 nautical miles, 70 degrees. 2700 nautical miles, 45 degrees. 3600 nautical miles, 30 degrees. 5400 nautical miles, 0 degrees, which means that the star will be on the astronomical horizon, although probably still above the apparent horizon, which dips by an amount depending on the observer's altitude. This already doesn't really make sense on a flat plane, as the star being visible exactly horizontally would mean that it's at the same altitude as the observer. But, as I've said, that's not what I wanted to point out. As we were moving away from the star's GP, its elevation has been consistently dropping by 1 degree every 60 nautical miles, until it reached zero. But, why stop there? Let's continue moving away. 5460 nautical miles from the GP, if the pattern continues, we'd expect the elevation angle to be minus 1 degree. It sounds unverifiable, but the apparent horizon can be lower than 1 degree below horizontal at altitudes above roughly 1200 meters. So you could check that by going into the mountains. As long as you take refraction into account, it will still check out. And so we continue. 5520 nautical miles, minus 2 degrees. 6000 nautical miles, minus 10 degrees. 7200 nautical miles, minus 30 degrees. 10,800 nautical miles from the GP, the elevation reaches minus 90 degrees, and so the star should be directly below us. If the 1 degree per 60 nautical miles is a general rule, and there's no reason to think that it isn't, it's simply what has to happen, and it does work. If you take two stars that are exactly on the opposite sides of the sky, if you stand 10,800 nautical miles from the GP of one of them, you'll see the other one in the zenith, so it stands to reason that the original star really is directly below you. But let's continue moving even further away. 12,000 nautical miles away from the GP, the calculated elevation angle will be minus 110 degrees. It sounds a bit absurd, because how can it be below minus 90 degrees? But this just means that we need to look 110 degrees below the direction in front of us, which is the same as 70 degrees below the direction to the back. 
so the elevation angle is really minus 70 degrees, but to the back instead of to the front. Let's go further. At 16,200 nautical miles, the star should have dropped by 270 degrees from the zenith, which gives the elevation angle of negative 180 degrees, or simply 0 degrees to our back. The star is now rising behind our back, but let's still not stop. We'll only stop at 21,600 nautical miles from the GP. At this point, the star should drop by 360 degrees from the zenith. But wait. 360 degrees is one full rotation, so dropping 360 degrees from the zenith puts it back in the zenith. So the star is back directly overhead. We're at the star's GP again. We are moving in a straight line away from the GP and somehow we came back. And note that we said nothing about the direction in which we moved. This would work just as well in any direction. So if we start at the star's GP and move 21,600 nautical miles in any direction, the star will be back in the zenith, which means we'll be back at the GP. Weird stuff. Sounds impossible. Unless... Unless the Earth is a globe with a circumference of 21,600 nautical miles. Thanks for watching.